Hi. We are on. Very exciting. Here we are, our Friday every other week or whenever we go live. Yes. <laughs> live. Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Christy from Planet Places. And I'm here with Kaylee Vaughn of Rooted Revival. Hello. And Happy Kaylee Friday. is our garden guru, everything garden. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. And here we are. We're both sitting in our sun. Yes. <laughs> Lots of sun. But I, we, um, I'm excited to talk to everybody about end of summer planting. And I, I've kind of grown in two different locations. And so Kaylee, we're going to do some live planted MD, which is what awesome. we have for our members, right? They take a picture. What is that? Right. And they send it to planted MD and then, and then we answer them. It's called custom coaching people, custom garden coaching. You like, you can't even, how many of you out there, right? Go to the nursery and you're tracking down someone like what is on my leaf and then you get the person looking at it and they're like uh and then you could tell they're making it up does right. that happen to you and you're like you have no idea you're making that up exactly <laughs> yeah we so certainly this is, do yeah. our best to really research it and figure out what's going on based on your environment based on the whole picture so we can get you the right answer Exactly. It's what I love. That's what I love about what you're doing for us and what we do at Planted Places. And I apologize, everybody. Our internet's a little wonky. So if it's a little cut up, that's what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, let's, Kaylee, why don't you talk to us about end of summer and what we should be doing? Um, you know, we're growing and, you know, I would say primarily most of our people are in Northern California, but we got people in Southern and, you know, kind of everywhere. So what, what do you, how, what should we be thinking about? Yeah. So as we approach the end of summer, it's usually starting to cool off in most places, even those hotter climates, you know, instead of seeing high nineties are now seeing, you know, lower nineties, higher eighties. So with that, the plants are going to kind of get a break. Now, what we want to watch for is bolting towards the end of the season. You know, a plant's whole goal in life is to produce seeds. So it's going to try to flower, produce seeds, and reproduce before the end of the season. So as the daylight hours start getting shorter and the weather starts getting a little bit cooler, it's going to basically trigger that in a lot of our plants and they're going to try extra hard. So we see, you know, especially like with our basil, it'll kind of like this one's getting, you know, suddenly the long, long little, it's time to pinch yes. it back. You can see it's just going to flower. You know, you can see this is where the little flower is going to emerge here shortly. So we yeah. want to go in, follow that back down to a lower branching stem and just snip that back. You can use all of that, but keep up on it because it's going to be happening more and more. And same thing with your lettuces. They're going to start shooting up. Make sure you're using those leaves while they're young, while they're tender. There's a much shorter period of time to use them during this time of year when they're trying to actively go to seed. So make sure you're, you're using them while they're fresh. Oh my gosh, Kaylee, can I interrupt? That is a really good point because I thought maybe I was doing something wrong because I had started Oh, right. I really, Just before I really started able to harvest them. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to turn off my video. Okay. So that way everybody can see the awesome strawberries I got grown in the wall and maybe that'll help our connection. Okay. <laughs> because you're the superstar anyway. So did you hear what I said? I was saying the interesting thing about the bolting with the lettuces, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm noticing that my lettuces are bolting sooner than they were doing earlier. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. much harder, even with some of those summer lettuces, like the summer bib lettuces and those long day varieties where they're, they're better in the summer, but we still, as you know, we're getting into the cooler weather, the end of summer, all of that is triggering. So what you want to do is harvest as often as you can. And when you're breaking those leaves off, you'll see um, the more mature they get, they'll start to almost have like a milky substance when you break the, the leaves off. And that's a sign that it's taking all of the sugar, it's secreting the sugar out of the leaves, which is what makes it really sweet and yummy. And it's trying to channel that into creating blooms and creating seeds. So that's why it starts to get really bitter. 
So this is the time of year to just use it up while you have it, while it's good. And then once it cools off a little bit here in a month or two, we're back into that good lettuce season again, where we have a longer time to enjoy it. Oh my gosh, that is so helpful. That's great because truly this is how this is happening to me. And then I also now I've got another question and then in a bit, I wanna just turn on my video and show some pictures of some things I have, but I'm getting questions about basil. Um, so with basil, like obviously it likes warm weather and it mm -hmm. likes that growing period of the warm days. When should people kind of consider, should they be planting basil right now? Um, and yeah. should they, so when I say plant, not seeds, but like kind of seedlings. more mature seedlings. And then when right. do they need to stop? Like, how should they think about that? Yeah. yeah. So with our basils, you know, again, basils are a very tender, warm season plant. So they like the warmth. They're a Mediterranean plant. So really they're, you know, they're used to that kind of arid summer, warm type of temperatures. So as we get into the cooler weathers, you know, we still in a lot of regions have time if we're growing from seedlings. Now they're not going to get super big. Um, if you've ever grown basil, especially in ground, it can get big. Like, I mean, talking waist high sometimes, some varieties. So if we're planting our seedlings, they might get to this size and you're still going to get some good harvest from them. Most regions right now have an average of, you know, 60 to 80 days until frost starts coming. And that's, you know, something that's going to completely kill our basil. Any frost is not good for basil. But a lot of us, even if we have frost in our regions, we still have a lot of really good sunny days that come after that initial frost. You know, it's kind of a light frost and then we get more sunshine. So what's nice about these is you can literally just put them inside and, you know, cover them up or move them to a protected area on those nights where it's going to get colder and you can extend the harvest a little bit that way or bring it inside if it's in a pot. That's great. And especially like bring it inside and have it by a really bright window, right? Where yes. you're getting Southern exposure, the warmth from the sun. Yeah. Yes. Or create those microclimates. I know I've, you know, I put up the tip videos a couple of weeks ago about creating those little microclimates. You know, if there's a nice warm corner that you can put your basil in, it's going to help that. So, you know, I move a lot of my more tender plants to, I have this corner by the house where it's sheltered by the wall. It's south facing, so it gets the nice warm sun and it's under a dryer vent. So it gets heat from that as well. And so you can look for those little areas, you know, the warm sunny window, uh, you know, a nice warm spot, um, you know, sheltered by some walls of, of your house, something like that is also going to help. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now I'm thinking what I want to show you, and I know our internet's not so good, so we're, we'll be speedy, yeah. but this, let me show you. So can you see that? Can you see that those holes in the lettuce there? And it's interesting because I see this and yet, Am I showing you that right? Yeah, it's da, 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 da. a little hard to Sorry, see in the light, but it, are they really like jagged? Yes. And I'm looking, and of course I do what we always tell people, look on the back of the leaves. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I don't see anything on the back of the leaf. The critter has left. Um, but is color? How should, what do you think about that? Oh, yeah. So I'll turn it off thing, again. I'll turn it I off. Know. Sorry. It was breaking up. So, have you seen, <laughs> so the first thing we kind of do when we're, you know, seeing damage to our plants is we need to kind of assess, okay, you know, do we see damage to the plants around it? Because that gives us an idea if it's, you know, sometimes like a squirrel or a deer literally comes in and is grazing off of all of these. Okay. That's one thing versus a more species specific pest. Um, where you're just noticing this plant and this plant have some, some damage to it. And then, like you said, you know, we flip the leaves over, we look for little caterpillars, um, we look for eggs, which are sometimes just teeny, teeny, tiny little things and can be hard to see, but we always want to check for that. So, you know, take the back side of your leaf and look at it and kind of, you know, run your fingers over it, see if you feel or notice anything. Um, and that's really anytime we see that type of damage is the first place to start because there are so many species of things that want to eat our plants. So right. with yours, it looks like, you know, it's not necessarily, they're not drilling holes into it. Um, they're not, you know, which is kind of more of a, 
you know, for smaller caterpillars, um, flea beetles, things like that, they drill little holes and they eat it kind of throughout the leaf. On yours, it looks like it's more around the edges is where they're grazing, is that correct? Yeah, and you know what? The hole kind of looks like a spider web, almost, like how they're interesting. You, is that, yeah, it's, yeah. So it's kind of near the edge, that is true, but it's almost sort of like a little spider web. So, <laughs> so yeah. I would think it is caterpillar, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's another great thing to look for is, you know, is it showing a hole straight through? Or you'll see sometimes kind of like the damage done by leaf miners where you can tell they're just eating part of the tissues. You know, they're eating the top, they're eating the bottom, they're eating, you know, the, the middle layer of the leaf. Um, so that's another way to kind of narrow it down. Um, spider mites, for instance, are another thing. They'll kind of leave, you know, kind of that jagged look, but you'll see almost, you know, you were saying, um, you know, you kind of see a film. Um, and another thing to check is your soil, because a lot of times, you know, white flies, things like that, they'll live down at the base of where your plants meet the soil. And if you kind of run your hands around there, sometimes you'll see them fly up. And a lot of these creatures aren't active during the day, so it's hard to catch them. So if we come out, you know, later in the evening, super early in the morning, sometimes we'll see different things than we might see when we're looking at our plants in the middle of the day. So really while I'm not able to get, a, do? yeah, and we'll definitely, um, after this, send me a good picture of that lettuce because I want to, you know, kind of, it's hard to see right now just because of the way the sun is on the video, but we can do yeah. a, a further investigation of it and post it in the. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Kaylee. I think, oh, sorry, I'm sorry about this. I think I think we're gonna have to stop because this internet is just not, it's not giving us good things, but yeah, let's do that. And we'll follow up with the post. And you know, and I know we talk about real basic kind of um, almost DIY efforts to like kind of keep the bugs at bay. Right, we try and to keep it to simple, to simple, simple, yes. you know, why do more when you don't have to, you know, we wanna use natural processes and you don't wanna always have to run out to the nursery to go buy something, you know, specific when you can use home remedies, you can, you know, a lot of times just spraying the plant off is enough. So we always yes. try to start with those methods first. And if you catch things early enough, usually that's enough and that's all you'll need to do. And I love it. I love that Kaylee, because it is true. Like if you're kind of going out there, we talk about, you know, kind of stick habits, but if you're just making a habit of going out, checking your plants, looking under yes. the leaves, and I, like, I've been doing that, we're like, oh, because I saw a lot of these white butterflies, which are, of course, laying the eggs for the caterpillar. Yes. And I know that. And we talk about that a lot with our members, you know, and so because I saw that, I wait a day or two and I look and honestly, boom, you see those things and I just start wiping them off before they can do damage. And I don't even have to spray. I just, I'm wiping it off. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. And you're on top of it. So it's not going to become an issue because yes. pests are just a part of gardening. So it needs to become a part of our regular maintenance where you know we, we don't need to freak out. We don't need to worry. We just need to know that we're going to expect this to happen and we're going to be prepared by looking each day and expecting there to be some damage and we can take care of it early on. And literally for me, it's like uh, two minutes a day. I just go out there. Yeah. Do you have an exciting fall challenge coming up? So if you know, if you're wanting to jump in, even if you already have your plants, um, or even if, you know, you've got friends, family members, this is going to be a really fun challenge um, where we're going to basically go from six seedlings in 30 days to grazing, growing your own food that you're harvesting and eating in that amount of time. So it's literally going to help you learn all the principles of growing food on a much, much smaller scale. So it feels manageable and not overwhelming. And fall is such a great time to be growing your food. So fall campaign is coming up. Chrissy's going to put the link in down below. But yeah, we're calling it the, the 6 and 30 challenge, right? For fall. 6 and 30. We yes. are. And I, I'm hoping I can say this without it breaking up. I'm so excited because we're going to go live. It just once a week, because we're growing for, you know, 30 days and we're going to do fun 
tips for people and kind of little tutorials and we're going to make it quick, but we're going to make it fun. And I'm so excited because I know we're working on all the, the details of that. And so you guys are all going to come out of this with confidence around growing food and see how much fun it can be and why, why we do this. You know, we all know the good reasons, but there's also so many internal hidden reasons that you, you experience and you discover when you grow food. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Super excited. Great.